All right, let's look at how we can simplify trigonometric expressions. Uh, this is a topic that students often struggle with. Uh, so I've lined up like eight different examples where you're going to see all kinds of cool tricks of the trade on simplifying these things, uh, trying to cancel, and as the directions say here, simplify to just a single number or a single trig function. That's often what your teacher is looking for. Um, a lot of students would ask me, I remember when I used to teach trigonometry, um, you know, how do I know when I'm done? Well, in this it's very clear. We're going to get it down to a single trig function, and then we'll know that we're done. So I've got this little cheat sheet off to the right there. You see uh, it's like sine squared plus cosine squared equals one and so on. Uh, these are all things that I imagine your teacher has given you. You have a formula sheet, and these are the tools in your toolbox right now. Um, now, there are a couple offshoots I want to just mention. If you subtract cosine squared on both sides, you see that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. And then vice versa, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. These, these come up all the time. These, um, where's my highlighter? I lost it where uh, these one minus cosine squared and the one minus sine squared, those come up all the time. So you wanna watch for those and you can often swap in sine squared or cosine squared. And you might even need to go the other way on some of these problems. Um, additionally, you see one plus tangent squared is secant squared, but also if you subtract one to the other side, you see tangent squared is secant squared minus one. So you wanna probably have that, the, all of these on your formula sheet also, it just helps. Um, and then cosecant squared, well, actually, let's write it this way. Cotangent squared x is cosecant squared x minus 1. I usually put the x's instead of the thetas, but you get the idea. And then down here, you guys already know, tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. We're going to see both of those today in this video. And then also all these reciprocal functions. You should know these by heart. You should know that sine is 1 over cosecant or cosecant is 1 over sine. You should know that. So make sure you have these memorized. Uh, maybe not all of these. Certainly tangent to sine over cosine. And I would strongly recommend you memorize these two. These are some of the Pythagorean identities as well as these guys. You should recognize them and know to look at your formula sheet. All right, enough. Let's get to some of these problems cotangent times sine. So I imagine you're wondering what, where to go, right? Well, maybe you know. You, maybe your teacher told you. One strategy is to convert everything to sines and cosines and just see what cancels, what happens. So we said a moment ago that cotangent is cosine over sine. And we're multiplying by sine. And that's all over 1, of course, if you write it as a fraction. All right, so what's going to happen now? When you multiply those two fractions, before you multiply, of course, you can cross-cancel. And this whole thing just boils down to cosine x. And that's your answer. See how I boiled it down to a single trig function without too much trouble. All right, let's go to the second one. What do you see here? We're going to simplify this to a number or a single trig function. What can we do here? This one's pretty obvious, I think, isn't it? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this equals 1 over cosine squared. That's easy. And then this cosecant or cosine squared, remember, is 1 over secant squared, and vice versa. I think, let me show you on the formula sheet. So cosine is 1 over secant, and also vice versa. So if cosine's on the bottom, we can write secant on the top, secant squared x. So that would be boiled down to a single trig function. That's what it means to simplify these things, is you look for substitutions that you can make based on this stuff off to the right here, and see what you can do. Let's look at the next one. Good stuff. All right, secant x minus sine tangent. What do you have? What kind of ideas do you have here? This is kind of a neat question, I think. Sometimes you have to form a somewhat of a game plan before you attack it. 
Uh, but you know what? Let's follow my advice from the very first example and let's convert everything to sines and cosines and see where it goes from there. So secant is one over cosine minus sine times sine over cosine. So really that can just be written as one fraction. Do you notice that we are subtracting two fractions and they already have a common denominator. They already have a common denominator. So I can write it as one minus sine squared, because that's what sine times sine is, right? All over cosine. Oh, one minus sine squared. That sound familiar? Go, let's go, let me flip back. One minus sine squared, right here. I said these guys come up all the time. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So let me flip back to where we were. So this right here is cosine squared. So this equals cosine squared over cosine. Of course, we have factors that can cancel. So this factor cancels one of those. So my final answer is cosine x, just plain old cosine x. So secant x minus sine x tangent x is the same thing as just writing cosine x. They'll spit out the same values. So we simplified it a heck of a lot, didn't we? Okay, next problem. We're just flying through these. Good stuff. I tried to pick out some good ones here. Secant squared minus 1. Secant squared minus 1 over secant squared. So there's a couple ways to do this. Does anything jump out at you? You might be thinking, well, a moment ago, I said that tangent squared is secant squared minus one. So this is tangent squared, but I'm just gonna do this a little differently just for kicks here so that you see some other tricks of the trade. Uh, this is a two terms over one term. So I can actually split this into secant squared over itself, which of course is one, minus one over secant squared. And what is one over secant squared? I think we just said that a moment ago. It's a reciprocal function, so it's cosine squared. And then there it is again, this equals sine squared. So this, by the way, this was the other part of that fraction up top. So I split it into two fractions. So it's like I reverse subtracted. I split it into two. Or it's the distributive property of division. All right. Let's keep plugging along. We're halfway there, folks. Secant squared minus tangent squared plus cotangent squared. Wow. This one's kind of wild. There's nothing being multiplied. So we can't really cancel stuff. So take a moment and maybe pause the video and think about what you might be able to do here. Watching me do it is one thing, but trying it on your own is where it's at. Okay, so I have an idea. I see here in my formula sheet that secant squared can be replaced with one plus tangent squared. Right, they're the same thing, that's what substitutions are. So I'm going to replace this with 1 plus tangent squared. And then just write the rest of it and see what happens. Well, what do you know? Do you see something now? This and this add up to 0. They cancel. They add up to 0, so they neutralize each other. We're left with 1 plus cotangent squared. Sound familiar? 1 plus cotangent squared is right here on the formula sheet. So this is cosecant squared. These problems take a little practice, which is why I lined up so many of these for you to see. I know I'm going quickly, um, but just trying to show you how we're just throwing things at it. Substitutions. I didn't go to sines and cosines in this problem. I didn't go to sines and cosines in this problem. I think it would have been a mess, honestly. So I thought that was a nice way to do that problem. Okay, let's look at this one. This one is kind of crazy because we don't have any squares. We don't have any squares, so I can't use these formulas over here. 
unless I can ma manufacture a square somehow. And, and that can be done, but I'm not sure we want to do that here. Sometimes you multiply by the conjugate, which would be one minus secant. Eh, I think that's going to create a mess on the top. So I have an idea. Just so you see an example like this, let's treat this like a division problem. This is going to be sine x over 1 plus, and then I'm going to change tangent to sine over cosine. Okay, so that's the first part. And we're going to divide that. We do have to put parentheses around it. We're dividing it by 1 plus 1 over cosine. You might be thinking, wow, that seems like that's going to be a mess. Well, we'll see. How do you be, now before we keep change flip and divide the fractions, we have to add those, the top and the bottom. So in order to add fractions, you have to get common denominator. So I like to call it upgrading. So I got to multiply this guy by this first fraction by cosine over cosine. So now I have sine x cosine x plus sine x all over cosine divided by now on the next one I'm going to add the fractions also by getting a common denominator which is cosine x so I'm gonna quote upgrade them so the second one is now uh, cosine x plus 1 all over cosine Now let's do our keep change flip and also while we're at it, just to save a little time and space, I'm going to factor a sine out. You see how this is a common factor on that binomial there. There's two terms and that's going to give me a cosine x plus 1. See, I saw that there was something interesting happening there. I saw that cosine x plus 1 and those guys match, so let's see what happens when we keep change flip. You're probably starting to see it now. If we flip over the second one, I have a cosine x plus 1 here on the bottom. So that will now cross cancel with that. And what else cancels? The cosines cancel, leaving sine x, sine x all by itself, and that's the answer. Wasn't that a crazy problem? I'm glad I found that. I was searching the interwebs and I just for some good problems so you can see a variety of techniques. And I thought this one was pretty cool because it didn't have any sine squared or tangent squared or second squared in it. We had to think outside the box here. Now, let me just say there's other ways to do this. We could have done it other ways. I'm not going to go through and show you a bunch of ways, but just trust me, there's other ways we could have done this um, that would have been equally correct as long as we get down to sine x. All right, we got two more examples. Please stick with me because a lot of these um, involve techniques that maybe you haven't seen yet, and I want to be sure you see all of these. All right, what do you think you do here? This one's actually a lot easier than the last one. I think I'm going to split it into two fractions like I did a moment ago with that other problem. because this is one. And then if that secant travels up to the top, it becomes a cosine on the top, doesn't it? Because of the reciprocal functions. That's how my brain thinks of it. Uh, some teachers are probably cringing out there if they're watching this. Uh, but I just think about this. If I'm gonna move the secant to the top, it transforms like a butterfly into cosine. One minus cosine squared is sine squared. Boy, that, one, that turned out to be way easier than that last one. One more. Let's see what, what kind of goodies I dug up here. Okay. Sine x over cosine x. That's tangent, by the way. Plus cosine over 1 plus sine. Mm, I don't know that we want to change that first one to tangent. I think we want to just stick with the sines and the cosines like we have and see what happens. You did an entire unit in algebra class on how, because I've just got done teaching it to my algebra students, on adding rational expressions like this. So you have to get a common denominator. So we got to introduce a cosine here and whatever you do to the bottom you do to the top. 
And then this one over here, I don't have a lot of room to write. It's going to need a one plus sign on the bottom and the top. One plus sign on the top there. All right, sorry for having to squeeze that in there. You see how the denominators are the same now? We've got a cosine and we have a one plus sign on both sides. So now the top is just along for the ride. Let's see what it works out to be. Let me change colors here. That fuchsia is a bit much, isn't it? Uh, we get sine x times the quantity one plus sine x plus cosine squared. Well, that's, that's promising. We like to see these cosine squares all over cosine times one plus sine. Now right here, I know that someone's hand is going up and saying, Mr. White, can I cancel right now? Can I cancel these two? Absolutely not. And the reason is, is because the top is two terms, sep you know, separated by a plus sign. So when you cancel things, you cannot pick and choose and cancel terms. You can only cancel factors. So right now we have one factor on the top and that doesn't match a single thing on the bottom. But there is something we can do. Do you see what we can do? Let's do the distributive property. Get rid of these parentheses and just see what happens. So we get sine x plus sine squared x. Sometimes this is just an adventure and you just set off on your adventure and you see where it takes you all over um, cosine x. times the quantity one plus sine x. All right, now what are we gonna do? What are we going to do here? Well, I see something. You see it? Sine squared plus cosine squared is hiding in there. What does that equal? That equals one. So on the top, there's my fuchsia again. I keep gravitating back to that, folks. Sine x plus 1 all over cosine x all over 1 plus sine. Now we have an all or nothing. This is the same thing as that factor. Those are factors that are canceling because this is multiplication here. All right, so what are we left with? 1 over cosine, which is secant. This thing just boils down to a beautiful secant and only a secant. All right. So you've learned a lot today. Hopefully you've learned how to, um, let me get back to my camera. You've learned a lot, you, hopefully today, uh, with all the simplifying. We, we tried to throw all those formulas at it and hope for the best and hope that eventually it would boil down to one trig function. Our teacher guaranteed that that would happen. So that was helpful. All right, well, good luck on your quizzes and stuff. All right, until next time.